Planet X will flip Earth's poles, bringing forth apocalypse, Doomsday Preacher says. This is on Bended Reality. Right before, when finally Planet X moves far enough away from the Sun that everyone on Earth looks up and goes, Oh my God, how could it have gotten there? And they never told us. How? Who's been lying to us? End quote. Via Sputnik News. Planet X, otherwise referred to as Nibiru, or Nemesis, or Wormwood, or Planet Nine, or Goblin, or whatever else name they want to put, Hercolibus, whatever, I don't know, uh, has long been a central, or the, or the blue star, red star, Kachina, whatever, has long been a central icon to a wealth of conspiracy theories, including amusing predictions that the approaching mystery planet will cause a massive increase in Earth's gravity, bringing about more than just tidal abnormalities. So-called Planet X, another name for the oft-theorized doomsday planet of Nibiru, will reverse the Earth's magnetic poles and drastically change the way the planet looks when it passes sometime soon, according to conspiracy theorist and doomsday preacher Gordon James Giannotto. Notoriously a believer that the wayward mythical planet of Nibiru will suddenly appear in our solar system before flipping the Earth's magnetic poles and unleashing wild gravity, he predicts that devastating earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, and tsunamis will uh, be about an apocalypse. Speaking live to Coast to Coast AM radio, Gianni Noto claimed that Planet X will not approach the Earth directly as it exacts its toll, at the same time remarking that the still unproven heavenly body size, much larger than our Earth, means it will strike from a staggering distance of 24 million kilometers. When Nibiru arrives, it will take the planet an hour to wipe out 90% of mankind, he says. This is what the conspiracy theorist concluded in his hilariously dismal forecast. Now, he may be... Uh, quoting somebody else, uh, like uh, Thomas and uh, his uh, book on uh, the book of Adam and Eve, the book that was banned by the CIA that was just recently released, a uh, 65-page book. I have the PDF of that, and I will be reading that for you to uh, listen to, uh, to have the pre if you have the pleasure, pleasure of listening to it, uh, just as a matter of reference, that you can say that you did listen to it, uh, as to what it says, because the CIA had banned it. Why would they ban it if uh, it was just nonsense? Uh, perhaps they banned it because he was referring to some facts. I don't know. I haven't read it yet. I've just uh, learned about it. I've uh, heard sections of it. But I want to read it uh, for myself and, and for you to have the benefit of that. Um, because we do have ancient references to planetary systems coming towards us every so often. We even have great accounts of earth changes and great floods and huge earthquakes and division of the earth uh, in uh, pr the pre-flood uh, era of the Old Testament. So it's even in the Old Testament. And also we have reference in the book of Revelation, even from our Lord uh, uh, and Savior Jesus Christ's mouth as to bod the bodily uh, powers being uh, changed. Uh, the sun and the moon will darken. The stars will be as if uh, falling from the skies. The, uh, the constellations will change its positions. And uh, in Revela Book of Revelations, chapter 8, talks about a great white star falling from the heavens onto the earth, which means... Uh, a star, not not a comet, not a planet, but a star uh, impacting us. And that the third of the waters will be poisoned and that people will die from the, drinking the poisoned waters. So we have uh, hmm, evidence of the past and we have predictions, prophecies for the future. We even have recordings in the Old Testament of huge earth changes of the past. So this happens every so often. We have the Hopi prophecies of blue and red star Kachinas. Uh, basically every culture in the world talks about a great flood 
in their myths and their legends. So, um, the, uh, it means that this could strike from a staggering distance of 24 million mile kilometers, and when it arrives, it'll take the planet an hour to wipe out 90% of mankind, according to conspiracy theorists concluding this. He says, what's going to happen at first is we're going to have increased earthquakes, volcanoes, tidal surges, bigger storms, the preacher gushed, adding, we're going to have all kinds of things like that, and the pace is going to pick up to the point where the governments cannot rescue anybody. You are on your own, and you're going to see that happen, end quote. And he goes on to explain right before, when finally Planet X moves far enough away from the sun that everyone on Earth looks up and goes, oh my God, how could it have gotten there? And they never told us how, who's been lying to us? And he carried on urging all within earshot to mark that day, quote unquote, in calendar, since he estimated that a mere 49 days would be left until a pole shift with seas expected to rise up by up to uh, over 600 feet minimum. Okay, well, the book of Adam and Eve by Chad Thomas that I'm going to read to you, a 65-page book that was banned and has now been released because of Freedom of Information Act request, talks about 10,000-foot waves, two-mile-high waves, uh, running at 1,000 miles an hour. That's at the speed of sound, by the way. So we'll look into that as well. Conspiracy theories around the mysterious Nibiru Planet X Planet Nine, Wormwood, Hercolibus, uh, Blue Star, Red Star, Kachina, have it that the mythical planet passes through our solar system on a long elliptical orbit just about every 3,600 years. NASA and the rest of the globe's scientific community has dismissed all Nibiru-related claims as a hoax. Okay, so we're a year about, a year about 2,000. About 1,600 BC is when we had the Santorini uh, earthquake eruption, the Santorini volcano, volcanic eruption, that um, devastated the whole of the Mediterranean, all the way up to uh, Europe, all the way down, of course, is to Israel and Egypt and all these areas. I did a couple of videos on that yesterday on Santorini. Uh, and uh, fr from the ash... Clouds. It was not a super volcano, but uh, we we had super we had volcanic eruptions about uh, one thousand to two thousand BC. Even in the in even in the United States, we recently, whenever we looked at the uh, uh, earthquake swarms, we were also interested in what was going on there as far as volcanic activity, because wherever we have a fault. You usually have not just earthquakes, but you have uh, something going on underneath. Under it could be a, t uh, a subsidence, it could be a, a subduction area, it could be a volcanic area, volcanic field, and we have a lot of them on the west coast. Even in the in, even in the Midwest, even in uh, the eastern seaboard, because that area was once over uh, the Bermuda uh, over the Bermuda area, where that's a, that was a hot spot. So basically all of and the North American plate is going towards the north west, northwest. Uh, so uh, we saw that we had eruptions uh, as recently as about a thousand years ago on the west coast. So it could be that uh, that was the last passage about 1600. That was about the time of the exodus from Egypt and the tribes of Israel wandering 40, dare, uh, 40 years in the uh, Sinai Desert before entering the Promised Land. So that somehow goes together with what happened during the Exodus. If you'd like to join me on my Patreon account, you will hear content not covered by mainstream media. These riveting stories will be based on my research and I will state my opinions and give my personal insight on diverse and controversial subjects and world events, events not covered by mainstream media, 
and not certainly on not supported by YouTube guidelines. So whatever I have on my Patreon, most of those will not be on my YouTube channel. Please consider becoming a member today. More of the, the most significant and important videos will be on my Patreon channel. Your support helps me to continue my research and keeps this YouTube channel alive. And we depend on your support, your generous charity, because we help economically challenged families here in Athens, Greece, and Kapota, and we also help the young generation with university tuition and the community around our church. Thank you.